for yourself and hopefully you're enjoying today's session so far this morning. What I would ask you to do, if you have the ability to tweet and uh, your feedback is really, really welcome at some point during the rest of the morning session or at lunchtime, uh, let us know your feedback and we can have the next comments to you a bit later this afternoon. That would be very much appreciated. Uh, well, I hope you've been able to coffee and uh, we'll carry on for the next session. So the next sessions are actually running in two education assistant practitioners. Um, this particular session uh, will have a number of different activities running along um, and actually going into session four. So shortly I'll be introducing a film pitch uh, about uh, the practitioner's views on the foundation degree and its relevance to their roles. I'll be inviting to the stage colleagues from the University of College Suffolk and City College uh, Norwich about the foundation degree programmes. And thirdly, we'll be inviting Julie White for the North and Suffolk Workforce Partnership around the current work to support education and career progression for Band 24. Julie will then actually lead through to the session four activities, which will then be asking you to do some work with us as well. Uh, on your tables, we'll be asking for round table discussions on your views about educating assistant practitioners. And those views will be really important to the day, and they will be crucial to actually feeding forward uh, to activities for the future. So, first of all, I'd like to introduce a film clip, a foundation degree. Thank you. Uh, my views on the educational uh, aspect of the role, uh, especially the foundation degree, is very favorable. I've found the uh, prospect of going to university get a foundation to be was enormously exciting. I couldn't quite believe it was happening to me. How uh, much of the day when we graduate and I get to early the waterboard and the down and have a uh, degree in my hand. That's when it become real. That's what I'm important. Um, I've been keen to the foundation degree at um, City College in Norwich in June of this year. Um, I found the course really helpful for uh, being an assistant practitioner. The course really made me think about different aspects, which we don't have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, but the course really definitely has benefited me in my role as it is now. I thoroughly enjoyed studying for the foundation degree. I found it much easier uh, learning about a subject that I care passionately about. It has certainly given me more confidence and a greater knowledge base which to uh, improve my passion. My views on the degree and overall competition were overwhelmingly enjoyed it. And the competences themselves were each suited to each aspect of each one. So everybody had different competences, so we were able to go back and compare, which was really good. Um, having the opportunity to go out and learn new skills alongside from my job is a dream come true for me. I've always wanted that. Um, having a young family, Having um, financial responsibilities, having a chance to learn to progress um, is, is wonderful and to have that funded, you know, it really has changed my life for better. You can transfer the skills, what you're actually learning at college through lectures, um, bring them back to your team, um, along with different adventure, the dementia module. Um, the, the pack I did, I've actually brought back to my team uh, because you know, not everybody's aware of so many different types of dementia. It's actually been a huge benefit for the team. It's a really structured course, I've really enjoyed it, and the really set out and um, relevant to practice. And you can link it in, um, you know, to your practice and to your ward, and then you make it relevant to your ward as well. Foundation degree has given me. Um, the basic knowledge behind anatomy, physiology, and the work of the NHS in order for me to carry out my role. It was very challenging. Um, the course is designed where you have three or four modules running at the same time. So you've got to be quite good at prioritising your workload, obviously balancing and working full time as well. Um, we went to college one day a week, it was transferred to school, so obviously equipment from there as well. So you've got to know when your deadlines are and um, be good at sort of jumping. Um, that remains one of the most challenging and difficult two years that I've had to face. But since obviously having part of the quality of life, 
the um, associate dean, uh, um, or my manager at the time, asked if I'd like to be involved in developing the foundation degrees, and I was really pleased to be able to do that. Um, many, many years ago, I worked as a healthcare assistant, so listening to what Cathy mentioned earlier about the fact that this is a very valuable role and is often overlooked in terms of education, I was so thrilled that finally a foundation degree was available for students to be able to study. In 2007, we had our first graduates uh, starting, um, who completed in 2010. Um, you can see from the stats there, they're gradually growing in numbers. Um, and we have found that along the way, we have both learned an awful lot uh, from the students themselves with the roles they're in. There's such a number of roles out there that it's fabulous to have the opportunity to have all these students together um, to be able to um, <coughs> Uh, develop that role and to discuss what they're doing in a num from a number of different acute settings. So in order to develop the foundation degrees, we collaborated with practice partners and in the early stages it was quite difficult because it was quite a new area we were looking at um, and it was a chicken and egg situation in that we thought, do we develop the foundation degree, do we develop the role, but eventually um, we came to develop the foundation degree having spoken to a number of clinical needs and educational needs in local trusts. And we came up with these pathways, and these are the ones that we currently have, um, in exploring some of the roles that are available to assistant practitioners. Really, um, I think as was earlier suggested, we want to make sure the roles are fit for practice, um, so that they are helping patients and at the moment, uh, these are the areas that we're looking at in terms of um, assistant practitioner development. I'm not going to put all the pathways up, but just an example of one of the pathways, I think it might be useful uh, to see what um, educational modules we have for our students. And again, with our collaborations with practice, we decided that um, to have a basis, a level four basis, all students from whatever pathways will do the same um, uh, modules so that they all have a core foundation. And from there, they go on then to develop in specialist areas, and we also have some options there. Well, we haven't got it right all the time with all our students, and we accept that. So we have really welcomed feedback from students in ways that we can develop and improve on as the uh, course we provide. So we now have a dedicated practice learning lead, which happens to be me, um, and I go out to practice areas to offer tutorial support for students as we cover sites over a number of areas it's sometimes easier for us to be available in site areas to speak to students if they need to see us for tutorial support. We have developed flexible support mechanisms and bespoke delivery patterns so that we can offer courses um, on site, uh, both at, for example at West Suffolk Hospital and Helston Hospital, so that students um, can help with travelling as we are supporting students across Norfolk and Suffolk. We've also had help from occupational therapists um, inputting into our programmes, particularly um, in areas of rehabilitation, so that we can get that specialist input to support students. And we'd like very much to um, help students with blended learning. Some of these students have had some concerns with um, IT issues and perhaps not um, being as um, uh, au fait with computers as they thought they would be, um, but I have been assured that a number of students can now shop on Tesco's following our course. <laughs> so if all else fails, we've, we've actually managed to um, increase Tesco's profits. <laughs> okay, just before I hand over to Paul, what I want to say is what we find really important for our students is that they learn through practice to practice. So a big part of our course is very much listening to what students do, being flexible um, and, and trying to meet the needs of a number of really different roles. We're really, really thrilled to, to be part of that process. And again, I'm very pleased to see the students here today. So I'll, I'll hand over to Paul. Thank you.
And I feel like we're going to gush on a little bit. Um, and talk about how fantastic it is to work with the student groups that we do and, and how wonderful it is to work with our practice partners and of course all of those things are true. Um, but I want to just share with you a little bit about my background. I was, I'm a trained adult nurse and I have spent many, many years working in the health service and recognising the value and the support that's offered to us by support workers across in all settings. And it's something that I became very, very aware of was that they weren't being invested in, there were no structures, there were no frameworks in place. And so five years ago, when I got um, recruited to come work as a lecturer for University Campus Suffolk, I was really, really thrilled to discover that the foundation degrees were in place, and they offered exactly that. It was about respecting our workforce. It was about respecting and making the most of the potential that we've got in place. And I think for me, it's one of the most rewarding aspects of my job, is to see the journey that our students have gone along, to see the potential that is tapped. And when I encounter an individual who says things to me, I, I never thought, and someone said this to me in the coffee line, Andy, wherever you are, um, I never thought I'd like research, but now I understand that the research process and evidence-based practice is at the very base of everything that we do, and although I cried about it, I now appreciate it enormously, that makes me feel really, really good, and it makes me recognise, actually, what we're doing as an institution, and what you guys are doing as uh, practitioners and, and people supporting practitioners, is really enhancing the quality of the work that we're doing. And it's about investing in human beings as well. And that, and that for me, that's so important. So we recognised, after completing the foundation degree, that we'd end up with an awful lot of individuals who were very, very proactive, who had really got the bug for learning. And I'm sure there's some people here like this in the room, who've really got the bug for learning. And we wanted to say, OK, we want to promote an ethos of lifelong learning. It doesn't have to be the end of the journey. Thinking back to the support workers, what we didn't want to do is say, OK, you've got to hit the foundation degree, now that is it. And I know that we're going to talk about that a little bit later in more depth. But something we developed was a BA, care, a BA Honours in Care practice, which was a top-up degree. So for those of you who don't know, and I'm sure you all know already, that a foundation degree gives you 240 academic credits. So we top up through the BA Care practice with another 128 academic credits to give you a full BA Honours degree. And we are delighted that so many of the students who graduated have decided to sign up for the BA Honours pathway as well. So for us, it's about taking people on a lifelong journey and recognising the importance of continued study. For me, I'm someone who qualified, what, 13 years ago with a diploma in higher education at Old I never thought I'd be studying for a PhD. I never thought I'd be able to stand in front of a group of people like this. I never thought I would be the competent, hopefully, individual that I am. And that's all come from education. Education transformed me as it's transformed many of us. And I recognise the real value of it. So, Something that we found out from students was really that we've got knowledge plus confidence equals enhanced practice outcomes. And there's no question of that in my mind. That's not always to say, as Julie indicated, that there isn't challenges along the way. We haven't always got things right, and there's certainly things we've identified with students that have struggled with. We recognise that if we can get the package right, if we can tailor education so it's meaningful, so it's appropriate and at the right level and support it, and actually we can transform the way that the NHS works and the way that individuals experience themselves. So, just a couple of wee examples for you. Um, the first one really, we're looking at what it does in terms of transformation of self. So a graduate said this to us, changes to the board area used to unsettle me. I really didn't like it. But since completing the course, I think more widely about the changes that are happening. I think more before I make a judgment. Now that seems like a really, really simple statement. But that expands on critical thinking, allowing people to reflect upon their practice, to think reflexively about their contributions and the basis of the way that they work is profound in my eyes. And it's something I'm enormously proud of. The second example I'd like to for you is someone who I don't believe is here today. Um, she said that following um, completing the course, a lot of our course is actually about leadership. We're looking to promote service innovation as well. Um, and as part of one of those projects that she did to work-based learning, she set up a support group for families affected by miscarriage. Um, and this is something that she looked at theoretically as part of her module, and she's suddenly since implemented it, and it's now something which is actually being taken forward by the Trust on a wider scale, and something that we feel enormously proud of. And obviously we feel proud about this initiative, but actually that we are not the potential in this individual. Now, it comes from you guys. It's about the intrinsic motivation. We're always learning from students. Um, I've learned so much from every single student that I've met. 
um, sometimes just to make me more robust and, and slightly less of a nice person. Um, <laughs> We recognise that across the, across the board for our student groups, there is a really expansive development of new roles in practice. People are developing all the time, and we as educationists have to recognise that, and hence the validation of our new end of life and dementia pathways. We've recognised with students there's enormous commitment to patient care, and that's something which we celebrate and central to our curriculum and our ethos. The intrinsic motivation, as I already indicated, is so important, and I've never felt to be impressed by the people who have taken forward and demonstrated such commitment through all sorts of personal hardships. And the determination to succeed has been a real motivator for me, and has been one of the real values of doing the job. So we thank you for letting us come and talk to you today. It's a privilege to be invited in front of so many of our past students and practice partners and others. Um, and I just really, really would like to say it's, it's such a positive thing that events like this take place that we are continuing to invest in our support work as people working from plans one to four. And long may it continue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul and Judy, for that. That's really informative. So through practice to practice, I think it's one of the expressions that were there. And I think it's really, really important, but also that uh, progression that you can actually build on as well for the workforce of the future and that's wonderful. So thank you again. So I would like to uh, introduce to the stage Natalie Taylor from City College Norwich, who will be talking about the Foundation Degree Programme. Welcome. inviting me today. Um, although she's not mentioned here uh, on the slide behind me, I brought with me Heidi Crisp. She's one of the students on our programme at the moment who I think for all of all of these familiar faces sitting out in front of me that are, are doing the course, have done the course, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, how great is she for doing this? But she's going to talk a little bit about her experiences as well. Um, how do we work this? <laughs> oh, is it this one? Okay. <laughs> Right, hard press. Um, I echo what um, Julie and Paul were saying in, in a lot of ways. In terms of foundation degree, City College developed it. We went through a similar process. I wasn't there at the time, but obviously I'm, I'm aware of what we went through, but a period of consultation with employers um, to make sure that what we were pitching was what was required for the market at the time. I'm going to try and base my talk on a slightly different angle because I don't want to be repeating what they say. I, they've said I absolutely echo all their words in, in terms of education, how education can develop the individual, how it can enhance the workforce. Um, but just a little bit of background to our course. It's slightly different and it's an, it's an FDSC, it's Foundation Degree in Science. Um, and we only currently have the one pathway, but it's a science pathway. Um, in 2012 we had 82 graduates and currently we've got 103 people enrolled on the course. So it's a large course um, and it's great that we've got employers have bought in and into our course and have people come along constantly. But we also have people that fund themselves through the course as well. Okay, uh, just a, a brief bit about the structure of our, of our course. Um, as I said, we only do have one pathway. Um, which is a science pathway. So every semester we have a science-based module and then we enhance that with other modules about such as psychosocial development, we look at law, we look at research um, and there's a range of option modules as well. Um, what we constantly encourage students to do is to think about how they're applying their knowledge and practice as well because it's not just about coming to college learning some new things and then going off and writing thousands of essays and getting really stressed about it. It's actually more than that. It's about thinking about what have I learned today and how am I applying it in practice. And one of the ways in which that's achieved is by having a workplace mentor. And I know Heidi's going to mention this, so I'm not going to um, talk at great length. But that link between us and work is absolutely crucial in terms of getting the most out of these people that are going to the efforts and coming on the course. Um, and as I think with UCS, ours come in for one day a week, and it's a lot of work, one day a week for one year. A lot of people are working full time, um, and I just want you to realise how much work people are doing you know, for their practice. It's a real degree. Yes, it's a foundation degree, 
Um, and what a foundation degree is a qualification in its own right. It's a two-year course, but at the same level, level four or level five, as any other undergraduate degree. So please don't underestimate what these people are actually achieving academically. Okay, our assessment strategy, as current and past students will hate us for, is wide and varied. People do exams, research, projects, millions of reflective pieces of writing which they hate us for, portfolios, they write reports, they write essays. And through this range of assessments, I can see smiling faces. <laughs> through this range of assessments, they build up a really, really impressive set of academic skills and their skills that can be transferred into the workplace as well. Which leads me on to what I really want to sort of emphasise today. Um, it's the importance of not only the knowledge gained on a degree programme, but actually the personal growth and skills that you can develop during it as well. Um, I'm sure many of you in the room have all done a degree as well. And if you can think back to when you did your degree, how much change and development that you went through at that time. Um, so I want to emphasise how important it is to realise how people are developing through the course. It's not, it's not just the knowledge they're bringing, but they're developing leadership skills, they're developing team management skills, time management skills rather, team working skills, the ability to think critically, think on their feet, be an autonomous worker, be a, a good patient advocate. And it's these softer intangible skills that are sometimes harder to judge. Um, so in terms of if you're thinking about do we have a band three or do we have a band four that's on a foundation degree, if you choose to develop a band four into your into your ward, into your area of work, you will have a person that's developed these skills as well. Okay, which in turn leads to an increase in confidence. And I think just about everyone that goes through the programme will say, will come out of it in the end and say, as much as I hate doing presentations, as much as I hate doing all of this work in my own time, actually I feel so much more confident as a practitioner, and as a result of it, I am much more effective in my role. You know, I'm not afraid to question doctors now. I will speak my mind. If I don't know something, I will go off and research, and I will know where to get that information from. Okay? And then, as, you know, as in your areas, people are also developing areas within work practice. And O'Donnell, we saw <laughs> on the video, who's developed a pack that's being used in practice. She's not alone. Others are doing similar things. But well done, Donna. Okay. I'm going to hand over to Heidi and uh, disappear off the stage. No, I'll stay here with you. But before I do, um, I'm just going to talk a little about, a bit about the future of our course. We're just about to revalidate the foundation degree. Um, and we're looking at possibly restructuring the assessment strategy, possibly rethinking the content. And we're also writing a BSE top up in health studies as well. So that's another year to give people an opportunity to progress on and get a full honours degree in science. Um, what I'm going to ask you today, I think I've got a captive audience, so I'm going to make the most of it. If you see at the back of the room, there's some flip chart, I and mean, you can't see it, but there's a couple of flip chart boards, and on the side, into the side, there's four flip chart sheets. If you wouldn't mind, have a think. There should be some pens. Please don't run off with them. I've bought supplies in case you do. Um, just think about what knowledge um, you think people need to gain from doing a foundation degree at the moment in the 21st century working in healthcare. What skills do they need to develop? Possibly, what can we include in our top-up? What do we need to take them to that next level? Is it something to do with leadership? Is it something to specific in practice? It's an open forum for you to just really sort of put some ideas down. Because we're at a point where we've got the opportunity to actually restructure this to do what we want. And, you know, who better to ask than the people that are actually going to benefit from the people that have been through it. So, I will ask you to do that when you get a chance today. Um, and I'm now going to hand over to Heidi. So, big round of applause for Heidi. My name's Heidi. I've worked in healthcare for about 19 years, and for the last three years, I've worked as an assistant practitioner in the community. When I was younger, I never had the courage or confidence to do my nursing um, study, so, um, and I was never very academic at school, so I'd rather learn new skills on the job. Um, however, here I am in my final semester 
of my foundation degree in health and I've been asked to talk briefly about my experiences of the course. When I first started the course in February last year, I was overwhelmed by the amount of academic work and level of knowledge that we were being taught. And after about two months, I'd had enough and wanted to give it all up. But you soon come to realise that everyone in the group is feeling the same and that as friendships build, you can support and motivate each other. The course has not only given me a better understanding of my own job role, but it's given me a greater understanding of the legal and organisational policies and procedures behind everything we do in our everyday work. It has enhanced my clinical knowledge and reflective practices and encouraged me to work my and encouraged me to approach my work and personal life in a more open-minded and holistic way, skills that I transfer into my workplace every day. But by far the biggest change for me has been my newfound confidence. This course challenges you to do the things that you think are unimaginable, such as standing in front of over 100 people and talking. 18 months ago, I nearly fainted at the thought of doing a presentation in front of seven of my peers. It has shown me that what I thought was impossible is possible with a lot of hard work. But just before I go, I just want to talk about this hard work. Even though this course is called a foundation degree, it is by no means easy. Last semester alone, we wrote over 11,000 words and produced several presentations while still doing our day-to-day -day job. As a foundation degree student, we should be allocated a mentor to advise and support us through our degree, the same as the student nurses. However, due to the work pressures, staff fitness and holidays, Many foundation degree students on the course have not received the support that they would like. The one thing I would like any managers or potential mentors here today to take away is that this degree is not only benefiting the individual, but is also benefiting the team within which they work. So please don't underestimate how hard they are working and allocate a little time with them so that they can fulfil their true potential. Thank you. So the impossible is possible with our help, basically. So thank you very much indeed to Heidi and Natalie for that. And um, just to reinforce, to say those feedback uh, pieces are just at the back, and we would really, really welcome that. We'd also welcome, as I mentioned earlier, on some of the Twitter feeds from that point of view as well. But also to comment is that the breadth and depth of your experience as well. It sounds actually fascinating. It's great to hear sort of the, the experience of how we can actually help that process develop for the future. Uh, so thank you very much again for that. I clicked. We just go to the presentation. I'm looking at our IT colleagues at the back. Fabulous. So, thank you very much. So, I'd like to now invite to the stage Julie White uh, for the North and Suffolk Workforce Partnership. Uh, about that wonderful education, career and uh, progression activities. This particular part of the session will then lead into session four, which is where we'll ask, be asked you to do some round table work. So we'll be looking forward to your participation. So thank you very much. I'd like to welcome Judith to the stage. Me here today. Um, I'm Julie White and I'm the band wonderful leader and careers manager, so what does that mean? I'm part of Cathy Branson's team and uh, we're a new team and my role is to actually help develop and support the band wonderful. I heard some comments around the fact that there's some fear in the room today about the fact that you think that what we're, our underlying aim is to try and encourage everybody to move on and to go up and to do lots more learning. That isn't necessarily the point of today. The point of today is to make sure that we have opportunities for people to be able to develop themselves, to continue to develop themselves, but also to, to enter into career pathways if that's what they want to do. 
I also think that considering some of the video clips we've seen this morning, that perhaps along the line of the things that I have as a potential career pathways should be ones in public relations and, me and media. Because I think we've seen some fantastic people here today who really, really put the message across. And I'd like to offer a huge round of applause to the people who've given us the video clips so far. Thank you. I know that people were very nervous about doing those, and I know that there was a lot of encouragement went on to actually encourage people to take part. But I think they put the message across so much better. How many times have we come to these conferences and people like me stand up here and talk? But it's the people out there that are actually doing the jobs. They are the ones that we need to listen to to help us focus on the future. So, Health Education England was established, and we're working nationally to identify three pathways for staff, all the staff in the NHS, but with a particular focus on bands. And I've put one to five, because we're talking about more bands one to four, but when you've got two four, where do you go from there? So I think we're actually talking about bands five and above. We're not the only people that's doing this either. Health Education England, they're actually looking at national models. So Health Education England are driving this nationally. I was asked to go to um, a launch down in London only last week, and whilst I was there, there was a presentation done by um, a lady from the University Hospital Southampton, and I only put this slide in just to show that they're doing exactly the same thing. They've actually got pathways for their bands two and three that go through to foundation degrees, and they've actually got the top-up degrees, which our colleagues from UCS and CCN are talking about. So to actually enable people to go through into um, degree nursing courses, if that is what they want to do, and if that meets business need. So what we're doing here in Health Education East of England? Well, as Cathy alluded to earlier, we actually have four workforce partnerships, so I'm not going to go through those again. The reason I put that slide up is just to say, though, that we are a regional group for the, those four workforce partnerships. So we are sharing the information and the learning that we've got in Norfolk and Suffolk with our colleagues. And we actually have someone here with us today who's from Essex, who's actually part of the National League. So just to try and make you understand that we are trying to link this together. We haven't got it right yet. We know we haven't got it right yet, but we are starting on a journey. And I do think that journey could be quite exciting. So. The Norfolk and Stuffer Workforce Partnership, as Cathy alluded to earlier, has a structure in it. She talked about the executive group this morning, and underneath that we have a stakeholder group. But more importantly to the people sitting in the room here, we also have a strategy group that's based on bands one to four. And that's a group of managers from all of the organisations across Norfolk and Suffolk looking at what do we need to do, what do we practically need in place to actually help support people that are doing those job roles. And we're not just in that group, talking around people that are in clinical areas, we are talking about our non-clinical colleagues as well, because it's really important that we develop them. They're the support structure for all of us, and we, we mustn't forget that they're a key part of our workforce. Now that we're Norfolk and Suffolk, we are very big when we all get together. Today's um, event was a prime example of that. We tried so hard to fit as many people into this venue as we could. And I know that there's people that wanted to come today who weren't able to come because we physically can't fit enough people in. So one of the things we've got to, work, we've got to consider is how do we put this into practice? So what we've done with the bands one to four work is we've developed some, some work streams, some subgroups. And some of our colleagues that are sitting here around um, the room today are actually part of those subgroups. They're in their very early stages. We've only had the first meeting of each one of these groups. But it gives you an idea of the key areas that we think we need to look at. We need to look at the management. How do we manage the funds that come down from Health Education England? How do we make sure that they get through to the organisations and get to be spent in the areas that needed to be spent? And that's on a lot of the people and your colleagues that are sitting here today. How do we go about commissioning? How do we go about purchasing? the education that we need. We've talked today about foundation degrees, but there are new kinds of qualifications coming through all the time. Do we need to consider those? Do we need to ask our partners sitting here to develop us something new? Access to work. How do we encourage people to come and join us? How do we encourage young people to come into the NHS? Do the young people that might be thinking about joining the NHS know what the new job roles and careers are? 
How can we help get that message out so they know what they might be joining? How do we encourage people to come back to the NHS? People who might have had a bad experience and left us. How can we encourage them to come back and join us? How do we develop the career pathways for the bands we want to follow? What should it look like? Not everybody wants to go on and become a degree qualified nurse or healthcare professional. But some people may want to. Some people may want to move out of the NHS and go and work in social care. Some of our social care partners may want to come and work in the NHS. How can we enable people to understand what the job roles are and how you can move between those areas? And if you join the NHS, it doesn't, it shouldn't mean that you can't at some point go and work in social care. It should also mean that if you're currently working in social care, why can't you come and join us in the NHS? Why do we believe that we've got different skills? Why do we believe that we have different experiences? And what should the qualifications actually be? What do you want to learn? Are the programmes that have been put together that you've been studying at, at the moment, are they fit for purpose? We have celebrated the foundation degree, and the foundation degree has given us some really, really positives. But we as acknowledge that our education providers need to make some tweaks and some changes. But those changes need to be radical, but they need to be small. We would really, really need to have a debate. And the more that you can inform the debate, then the better the decisions will be that come out of it. So, what are we talking about at the moment? We're talking about trying to remove, well, no, we're talking about first of all trying to identify the obstacles that prevent people from moving across the bounds. Then what we need to do is we need to try and work out how we remove those obstacles. I'm really pleased that somebody talked about mentoring and support. That's something that we need to think about and we need to work with. And it's really, I think, says a lot that today is being hosted for us by Paul, who's a practice education facilitator. How can we work with our pets? How can we, we work with them so that we can expand and include their skills in helping us develop new models? We've talked about the qualifications. We've talked about the fact that we're looking at how we can integrate with health and social care. We've talked about the fact that, yes, as someone asked from the floor, what about registration? We can't answer that because we're health education in England. But we can put pressure on, we can listen, we can look at where we can lobby. We can try and work out, we're not going to solve registration as Cathy said, so what can we do at the moment to get round it and hope that at some point they'll have an awakening and come on board with it. And also what are the future job roles going to be? How can we change the future job roles? Job roles? How can we design them? How can we develop them so that there is somewhere for people to progress to? Sue Hill, who some of you in this room know, who's actually been the project manager who actually put today on and organised it for us, has been doing a lot of work in this field over the last nine to ten months. And Sue's with us at the back of the room, and I hope we'll all go and talk to her and congratulate her on what wonderful job she's doing today. But she did an amazing piece of work, and has come up with this what is a quite complex slide, but trying to capture what we currently have in place, so that to try and help focus the discussion so we can see what the key bits are we need to develop to actually take us forward. As you can see, we've got on there apprenticeships alongside foundation degrees. They're available to us. Do we want to use them? What do they look like? What's the difference between an apprenticeship program and a foundation degree? Can we incorporate a foundation degree into an apprenticeship? We've got lots of questions, and at the moment we don't have lots of answers. What are the job roles going to be? What are the degree courses going to be? Do we want to do part-time top-up degrees? Do we need to allow people out to go and do a full-time degree course? What are the job roles going to be? Where could you go? Do you have to go into nursing? You might want to go into management. You might want to become a clinical specialist. You might want to come out of, of, the, um, of the care profession and go into education. How can we help people to identify what's the right route for them? Because there are lots of routes. And we need to try to start to unpick that so that it makes sense and there's something that you can actually see and follow through. Now, we've just spent some time talking about the fact that everything is about pushing everybody up a career ladder. It isn't always about pushing everybody up a career ladder. We need really good healthcare assistants. We need excellent assistant practitioners. But once you've done perhaps your apprenticeship programme as a healthcare assistant, your foundation degree as an assistant practitioner, people are saying, I really enjoy my job role, 
but I want to continue to develop myself, continuous professional development. Something that we have in place and that we fund from the Health Education East of England for all of our graduate staff, all of your band five and above um, colleagues have access to continuous professional development. And Sue's been doing piece of work with Carol Edwards around looking at how do we start some CPD opportunities for assistant practitioners. Having had some discussions with managers, with assistant practitioners, and with our, the education providers in the room today, they have developed, initially, this piece of paper that is on your desk, that is an opportunity for four study days for existing assistant practitioners. And the four study days that they are currently on offer are transitioning into the assistant practitioner role. So, okay, you've done your foundation degree. What does that mean now? How do we put some of that into practice? Because that was what we were being asked for. How am I going to manage my continuous professional development? How am I going to look at having an input into service innovation and improvement? And how can we introduce the role of the uh, how can we introduce the role of the assistant practitioner into becoming a practice educator? These the course contents of these uh, four days have been developed by <laughs> Natalie's had an input into this, sitting down here, as has Julie. Um, there's an opportunity um, across in the marquee for you to find out some more information about it. You've got the proposed dates for, for the courses here, and you've got some email addresses on the bottom. So please feel free to have a discussion with your manager to identify if you can have some release time to go on one of these study days. And please overwhelm the young ladies on our right hand, our colleagues on the right hand side with your applications to go up on these days. They are also open to any of, anyone who's done their foundation degree who's not here with us today. So if you go back and have a conversation with your colleagues, it's, these days are open to them. Um, and at the moment we have a funded number of places, but if we need to look at extending those, then we will look at doing that. So, what we would like to do now, because in fact we've spoken to you for quite a, a period of time, and we've asked you lots of questions, but not yet given you much opportunity to provide us with some feedback, is we'd like you on your table to have some round table discussions. Can I just ask, does every table have a nominated facilitator? I think we put facilitators on the table. <laughs> Could I ask, if you happen to be on a table that doesn't have a facil facilitator, would somebody mind volunteering, please, to be the facilitator? Um, it's just really a case of capturing people's thoughts.